So I'll catch you on the rebound, your magnitude. Until next week. Nanu. Nanu. <laughs> so it's Nanu. Nanu. It's funny. The other day I was talking to somebody and I was like, Nabu, Nabu. But hey, it's uh, Robin Williams from an old TV show for anybody who is too young to know called Mork and Mindy. Um, he had this thing where he would do Nanu Nanu, and I thought it was Nabu Nabu. So we got a few things to discuss today. A um, couple exciting things. One, that the website is going up tonight. So that means you'll be able to download the network, uh, the Nabu Internet Adapter. So you'll be able to simulate the network and start running some software as it was meant to be on your Nabu at home. So you'll be able to, uh, to do that tonight. So keep an eye out. I'm really excited. I'll do a video with instructions on how to get it running after this. But first, I think we're going to do some Nabu news because there's some exciting stuff happening. And I get so excited when I see things um, progress and people developing things. So first, what you'll see here is uh, the last video we mentioned, um, Santo, who is starting a project with a couple others who are reverse engineering the floppy drive controller. So he actually has a Nabu set up at home and he has a floppy drive as well but he's having some issues booting the drive because he doesn't have any media is what we're so far thinking he wrote the floppy drive image from um, dave dunfield's uh, website from his archive so whether that archive is corrupt or not uh, i guess <laughs> that image is corrupt or not i guess that might be the reason why it's not booting so that's a pretty exciting video if you want to get a chance to watch that and see the uh, floppy drive in action even though it's not booting. Uh, secondly, I think is really cool is Lars the 18th. And I mentioned this guy the other day, he's been modifying the open MSX emulator and he's been modifying it to be able to boot up the Nabu ROM. So he's also, as you can see here, 140D the boot address, um, the, the origin address for, uh, for called applications that are loaded in from the, from the ROM that I discovered. So he's got a little program he's throwing in there and he said he's not getting the boot as you can see in the screen up here. So that could be a few different reasons. I haven't looked into too much of what his program's doing here. He just keeps loading the stack pointer into uh, HL. So I don't know what he's trying to do, but I offered to give him a program that should run. So if we can get a program running in his emulator, then we should see an MSX emulator pretty soon. And that'll be really exciting because then we can make a module for OpenMSX to also load the, uh, the project files that I have online. So this is an exciting uh, adventure that Lars is on. So we're gonna keep an eye on that for sure. Next, we got Mikey Cobby. Um, great guy. He's been doing some pretty cool stuff with his with his Nabu. He's one of the first who's uh, taken the the ROM and demonstrated um, reading the ROM. Which, and I kind of want to talk about that actually. Let's let's do a little interruption because a, a lot of ROMs are being posted online, and I'm seeing uh, people reading the ROM everywhere. And I don't know if, if, if it's the first time a lot of people are reading ROM files. So first thing is everyone is using these like disassemblers, okay? Like a Z80 online disassembler. So I don't know, let's find one like this. I think, uh, let's see, I might have to type in online here to get one of the popular ones that people seem to be using, like disassembler.io, okay? Now these are neat. But what one thing they don't do is they don't, unlike Gidra or um, actually the, the disassembler that I use, which I can demonstrate here, is a Z80 disassembler for Windows. There's also a Linux version as well. But what the reason why these like these online ones will maybe one day be great, but they don't have a few features that are really important for disassembling um, a ROM file or any Z80 comp compiled code. And let me demonstrate that. I'm gonna just load up in here a copy of the ROM bin. And we're gonna do the revision A, um, that's the 4K version. 
and then we'll step through, specify the Z80 TPU. Now the base address is gonna be zero, so we'll leave that there. And okay, so now we have what looks like code. And anybody who doesn't um, read much assembler, you're gonna think, oh wow, this is, this is definitely assembler. Look, it's got all these LDs in there, right? And that's really what you see a lot of, but when people are looking at assembler. But um, what you're not seeing are any, any data references, right? There's no data storage in here. So what's, what's happening is this um, disassembler isn't able to parse the difference between any data and any opcode. So an opcode is at its basic um, functionality of a processor. It's the single function that it does. And, and that's what assembler essentially is doing, right? It's, it's just taking LD as an opcode and then the opcode expects um, parameters. So <clears throat> to be in different registry, uh, register values. So here's the thing, uh, disassembler like this, which we can show you. So what I'll do is I'll delete this ASM file. Um, I could always restore it from source control, so don't worry, I have a lot of comments in mind. But if we take a look at the parameters I'm using for this, that's a bin, where, you know, where, where it's gonna start. So a few different parameters you're gonna see here, but what's gonna be super important about watching what my, my output's gonna end up being. Okay, so as you can see here, it's done. And now we have an ASM file. And which is really nice too, is this file, this, this assembler is smart enough to be able to um, take a look at places that, uh, where data is being actually accessed and um, initialized data as well. But let's scroll through here and a couple things you'll notice. One is there's a lot, you'll see a lot of addresses beside things, okay? Well, you're not gonna see that here. That's super useful because what's, what's actually happening is there's memory addresses that are being called and labels that are being called. So you're actually seeing the address that it's supposed to go to. So if we take a look at a call here it's just calling the memory address and it's not giving it a unique name. And unique names are friendly, right? Those are nice, but that's not the big reason why we this, this code is not actually code. And I'll show you as we scroll down here, you're gonna start seeing stuff like this, okay? And keep coming. Here, maybe I'll just skip ahead because you'll see a whole bunch of stuff that's going to make you go, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. There we go. See all this text? So this is all data that is not opcodes, okay? This is data. And what's happening is on this disassemble, none of that exists. Now, of course, you can go through manually and you can grab a piece of data or a line of code and you can hit uh, D to turn it into a data line or C to turn it into a code line and it'll convert it for you. So what you're seeing here is the actual real code. Okay, so you're seeing real program code up here and then you're seeing um, referenced actual data that the application is going to be using, the ROM files going to be using. And you can see there's actually messages here, right? So what's, what's the difference is, is that this disassemble versus this disassemble is this is just taking these values and thinking they're opcodes and that's getting mixed up. Now you're so, of course, you're seeing Mikey Cobby recompiling the, uh, the disassembled source because he's, this, the disassembled source is just, is not, um, you know, this it's 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 actually this it's just that um he said in here we actually see like a bunch of values too so this would be probably font information right so you need this you need it to be disassembled it through a proper disassembler so i do recommend that people use um you know like z80 win i think is a good one so let's get back to what uh well what is this holiday music <laughs> we don't want that. Um, we want this one. Yeah, so what Mikey Cobby's doing uh, in his last video, he, he did demonstrate decompiling, but I do suggest you go through with what I just demonstrated first. But what he's doing is he's got a, an Arduino that's mounted on a board, which is allowing him to be able to actually simulate the ROM, which is pretty cool. So he's got, um, I don't know what he's doing here, a bunch of no operations, loading, C into A, loading C into A. So, 
I guess I'm not sure what his, what his outcome is. I think he's just trying to um, change the ROM and demonstrate that he can recompile the ROM maybe with a new CRC. Maybe that's what he's doing. So he's changing the messaging. So this would say adapter failure and now it's saying hello world one, two, three. So cool. That's a really neat, uh, neat little uh, project. So I'd suggest watching his video. It's kind of fun. Oh, Leo. Okay, so Leo's got a new video, which I think is super exciting. I think you should be watching this because he's got lots of floppy drives and hard drives being represented here. So this is really neat because there are a bunch of group of people, like I mentioned, um, like Adrian's doing it as well. And so is Santo. Santo's pretty progressed pretty well. So they actually already have a, uh, a reverse engineered PCB drawing. So that should be uh, really exciting to see. Um, so what what he's showing here is the network adapter. Not a lot of people have, have talked about that. And he, which is great about one of the things he does mention, and this has been an unknown for a lot of people here, is this chip that he's pointing at. Now, every NABU, when you boot it up and when you run it, it somehow has to have some sort of unique identifier so that it knows what it is and what software it's supposed to have access to. Because you can buy different um, plans. You can buy the logo plan, the video game plan, the family plan, as we saw in the menu on another day, earlier day. So this needs to somehow know what information it's allowed to have access to. And that's done in the, the network adapter. And he talks a little bit about that with that chip. So that chip is programmed with a unique identifier. And then that identifier is related to somebody's billing plan. And messages can be sent to that particular computer. And as he mentioned as an example is if the person doesn't pay their bill, they can actually pop up on the screen and say, hey, come pay your bill. So I think that's pretty wild. And uh, that answers a huge question that a lot of us have been wondering. Now, he does mention that there's a message file in the transmission uh, cycle that I have that is crashing the system. So what I've had to do in uh, inside a copy of my segment files is I've had to uh, rename and remove the... Um, the message file so that it doesn't crash the system. And so I think this is a really great video for you to watch as well. And of course, I'll link all these videos in there. And somebody had sent me this video, which I don't quite know how to take it. I don't know who this guy is. Um, Ab Abubuku or something. I guess he's some sort of YouTuber that has a stream, but he's really angry. <laughs> I don't know why he's so angry. And he yells about the Nabu. And he's very short-sighted because like a few other people have mentioned and kept saying, oh, it's useless. It's useless. There's the, the, the TV system's gone. Everything's gone. Well, that just goes to show how short-sighted so many people can be. Um, dude, <laughs> just because you don't understand how it works doesn't mean there's other people out there who understand a little bit more than you. So, the fact that I reverse engineered the protocol, got things working, was able to obtain some data files. Um, yeah, we have a working NABU. I don't know why this guy is so angry about it. He's yelling, saying, and he compares it to a set-top box. Um, I, I think that it would have been good if he had some opportunity to uh, to research a little bit before. I don't. Th I think it was pretty premature for him to react so emotionally <laughs> um, on live stream because he's just goes off on a tangent. So I think that he, <laughs> again, I don't know who this guy is, but he might be uh, an interesting video for you to watch if you want to see somebody um, just <laughs> just go off for no reason whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's really, really great. So these are the updates for today. This is a longer video, 14 minutes. What am I doing? I should be playing some video games. Well, the website, like I said, is going to be up tonight. Um, thank we had we had a lot of help and I'll, I'll put some uh, some references to people who've been able to help inside of the messaging on the website but you should be able to download the network internet adapter uh, right away and I'm also uploading a video that shows you how to wire your RS422 or RS422 adapter to USB because um, you know you need that to get this thing rocking all right everyone I'll see you online <laughs>